Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company will also bring you the Kraft Music Hall every Thursday night. Present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. You know, I've just learned from several mothers in the neighborhood that their meal planning problem is not three, but four meals a day. That is, if you count in the after-school snack that means so much to healthy, growing children. Well, I've found out, too, that many mothers make short work of that in-between meal. Along with a glass of milk, they serve a slice of bread spread with parquet margarine, and their youngsters are really satisfied. For parquet, the quality margarine made by Kraft is both delicious and nourishing. It's made to order for grown-up wartime appetites, as well as for hungry youngsters. Yes, parquet margarine has become a favorite mealtime spread for bread because it has such a grand appetizing flavor, and because it's one of the best energy foods you can serve. What's more, every pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So buy it tomorrow. Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Let's look in on the great Gildersleeve. It's a cold winter Saturday, and he's at home, occupying himself with some papers that look very important, while Leroy plays happily by the fire with his Christmas puppy. If you claim a credit in line 15, disregard lines 19A and B, complete schedule L1 on page 4, and enter result in line 19C. Gibberish. <laughs> Has the puppy eaten this morning, Leroy? Sure, he ate and ate and ate. I wonder if I could put him down as a dependent. <laughs> yeah, I suppose not. What are you going to help me build a house for, a monk? A house? Not today, Leroy. What's your promise? I know, but i got to get started on this confounded income tax. I thought it didn't have to be in till March. Don't worry, it'll take till March to finish it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, if line 20 is larger than line 21D, enter the difference here and also is item 20, page 1. If not, see item 23. The dog is right. Line 20. Confound it, Leroy. You'll have to keep the dog quiet. This thing is very complicated. Well, if he had his own house, he could go there and not bother anybody. I can't build it today, my boy. But I've got to have quiet. Okay. Have to be quiet, Stinky. Yeah. What? What'd you call the puppy, Leroy? Stinky. That's his name. Since when? Since yesterday. Well, I won't have him call that. You'll have to find something more suitable. Oh, gosh. He likes it, Unc. It suits him fine. If you'd give him a bath, it wouldn't be so appropriate. <laughs> Why don't you go and give him a bath right now? It's bad for puppies to have baths in the winter. Nonsense. Who told you that? You did. Oh. Uh... Uncle Moore, has the mail come yet? Mail? I don't know, my dear. I haven't looked. <coughs> oh, what's the matter, Stinky? Marjorie. <laughs> well, what did I do? I do not like the name for the puppy. Can't we get a more dignified name for him? Like what? He wants to call him Rover. I didn't say anything about Rover. Although Rover's a nice name for a dog. Here, over, Here, over. Doesn't seem to go for it. You can't expect him to know it the first time. Here, over, Nice Rover. Come to Uncle Mart, Rover. Rover. <laughs> Don't you growl at me, you little mutt. He's not a mutt. He's an Airedale. An Airedale? Well, he behaves like a mutt. Oh, he can't help it. I'm going to get the mail. Yeah, why don't you go somewhere too, Leroy? Take the dog with you. Oh, it's too cold to go out. What is that to do? Uh, go practice your piano. You haven't practiced all week. Okay. Come on, Stick. Uh, come on, Rover. <laughs> Victory tax credit. <laughs> this is a Lulu. Here you are, Uncle Moore. Some lovely mail to cheer you up. Huh? What is it? A bill from Dr. Hargrave. Uh, certainly didn't lose any time. I wonder what he'll have the nerve to charge me. All those fancy instruments, complicated tests. Well, I won't pay it, that's all. The robber. Well, what is it? To professional services, two dollars. What does he think I am, a pauper? <laughs> Leroy. See, there's something about deducting medical expenses on your income tax. Here, instruction 15. 
A deduction is limited to such expenses oh, as... Oh, Leroy! Leroy! Oh, Leroy! Leroy, answer Bertie. Confound it, I've got to have quiet here. What do you want, Bertie? Did you feed Stinky this morning? Bertie. What's the matter, Miss Gilsey? That's not the name I want that puppy called. It's very offensive. It sure is, but it fits him. <laughs> what I want to know is how long is he going to be sleeping in my kitchen? Yeah, if he had a doghouse. Quiet. I've got to have absolute quiet here. Yes, sir. That's more like it. Now, single person not living with husband or wife, 25%, plus 2% for each dependent of line four, but not more than $500 plus $100 for each dependent. By George, I give up. Come on, Leroy, let's build a doghouse for Stinky. <laughs> Dark as your hat down here. You go ahead, Leroy, and turn on the light. I will if I can find it. It's right over where the workbench is. I know, but where's the workbench? Right under the light. Big help you are. Ouch! What's the matter? I bumped into something. Well, why don't you watch where you're going? <laughs> Who left that there, and what is it? It's my sled. What's your sled doing in the cellar? Oh, just polishing my runners. If I find it here again, Leroy, I'm going to burn it. Now, turn on the light. I've got it. There. Leroy, I thought I told you to clean up this place way before Christmas. I did, Unc. You did. Just look at it. I know. Isn't it terrible? You clean up anything around here and right away somebody messes it up. Yes. It's discouraging. I give up. Let's get on with the doghouse. Yeah, let's. Here's a soapbox I've been saving. Soapbox? I thought if we cut a hole in one end for a door and put a roof on it... That's no good. Why not? In the first place, it's not big enough. We need something about three feet, six inches. Three feet, six inches? The dog is only a foot long. He won't always be a puppy, you know. You have to remember we're building for the future here. Besides, whatever's worth doing at all is worth doing well. Remember that. Get me one of those long boards over there. They got nails in them. We'll pull them out. (sighs) (laughs) That's the stuff, my boy. Now lay it on top of this soapbox and we'll saw it into lengths. Can I saw it? Perhaps after I've shown you how. For corn's sake, I've been sawing all my life. Well, there's a right way and a wrong way to do everything, my boy. You might as well start by learning the right way. Okay. First, you observe, I take the ruler and I measure it off very carefully. Exactly three feet and six inches. Then? Unc. What? The ruler. Wrong end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mark these very clearly, my boy. There. Now, the saw. Here you are. Thank you. There. Now about saws. There are two kinds of saws. The cross cut and the, um, uh, the other kind. Rip. Where? What? Rip saw. That's the other kind. Oh, very good. Rip. <laughs> you know how to tell them apart? No, how? Well, um, takes experience. All these things call for experience What kind is this? Huh? The saw, is it a cross cut or a rip saw? Well, sort of in between (laughs) Now, observe the way I hold it, Leroy Lightly, yet firmly Being careful at all times not to drop it or bang it it against anything (laughs) Uh, Teeth are very delicate, you know I know Now, you take your piece of wood, so You place it on the box And you put your knee on top of it to steady it Yes. Are you watching? I'm watching. Next, I raise the saw, take careful aim, and start in with a smooth, even stroke. You hit a nail, Unc. Yeah, darn bored. That's the trouble with it. That's bad for the saw. You don't have to tell me, Leroy. Only it wasn't my fault. But I'll tell you. We'll make the doghouse three feet five inches. That way we'll miss the nails. Yeah, but there's a knot. A knot? Yeah. All right, three feet four. That'll miss the knot. (laughs) Well, we may have to take a couple inches off the dog, but let her rip. (laughs) Darn wood. Bang. Must be three. You know what? What? I figure we're going to need about 48 pieces like this. Forty-eight? Well, is the bottom, two sides, two ends, and two pieces for the roof. See, all this for a dog. Smile, I'm tired. Oh, 
no, Lee. Hey, Unc. Unc, your coat. Never talk to a man when he's sawing, Leroy. But your coat, you're sawing it. it... Oh, <laughs> confounded thing. Stand back, Leroy. <laughs> <sighs> Good work, Unc. That makes 17. Only 31 to go. 31? Oh, Mr. Gilsley. Uh, down here, Bertie. My goodness, you've been down here all afternoon? Never talk to a man when he's sawing, Bertie. Don't be impudent, Leroy. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gilsey. Miss Ransom's on the phone. Oh, Mrs. Ransom? Yes, sir. She wants to know, could you come over to our house for a little tea? Could I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Unc. Uh, tell her I here I come, Bertie. But, Unc, what about the dog? House. Well, you get the idea now, Leroy. I'll leave the finishing touches to you. Finishing touches? We haven't even started. I don't know how to go on. I'll tell you what to do. You find a nice soap box and cut a hole in one end for a door. <laughs> tell her I'll be right there, Bertie. Gosh, what a character. <laughs> Your tea, Rock Martin, strong or weak? Well, I'm not much of a tea hound, to tell the truth. I like it anyway. <laughs> you like it strong, probably, because you are so strong. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you like it weak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, silly. Tell me, what are you doing this evening? Have you any plans? Uh, plans? Not a thing. Oh, good. You'll stay to supper then. Oh, will I? Leela, what's up? Come on, tell me. Oh, Frock Martin, you're so impetuous. All right, I'll sit over here then. <laughs> now tell me. Well, drink your tea first. You know, Frock Martin, I've had a feeling you've been a little put out with me lately. Put out? I don't know where you got that. It's true. You know it is. Tell me, is it because of Dr. Hargrave? Why should I be put out about him? He means nothing to me one way or the other. Well, I thought maybe it was because of that party New Year's Eve and because I've been seeing so much of him lately. Have you? This tea is good. Mm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Uh, tell me, now that you've been to him, don't you agree that he's wonderful? Who's wonderful? Dr. Hargrave. I don't see what's so wonderful about him. Just a doctor. Oh, but I think all doctors are wonderful. Uh. Ever hear you rave about Dr. Pettibone? Of course, Pettibone doesn't kiss your hand. Oh, Throckmorton, if you're implying that Dr. Hargrave has made advances to me, you're mistaken. Gracious, he's much too busy to have any interest in poor little me. All he cares about is science. Uh-huh. Hmm, that's all any real doctor cares about, science. Oh, I love science. Uh-huh. Hmm? He looks a little like Walter Pigeon, don't you? Who's Walter Pigeon? You mean to tell me you've never seen Walter Pigeon in the movies? I can't tell one movie actor from another. Oh, I saw him in The Life of Madame Curie last week, and he was wonderful, even with a beard. Oh, so was Greer Garson. Huh? All she did was stand at his side day and night and be a help to him and bring him little things to eat. That's all I'd ask. What? Just to be allowed to stay at his side and feel that I was contributing my little bit to science. Are you talking about Walter Pigeon or Dr. Hargrave? Rock Martin, you're laughing at me. No, I'm not. Only Well, I... he doesn't laugh at me. He told me he'd take me along with him on a case sometime. Leela, if you got me over here just to tell me how wonderful Dr. Hargrave oh, well, I'm is. I'm sorry, Rock Martin. I know you're jealous, and I should I'm be. not jealous. Just because I'm not a doctor... Gosh, you'd think doctors were the only people who were wonderful. Oh, we can't all be doctors, Throckmorton. I know that. It takes all kinds. Thank you. Now, you're a businessman. That's wonderful, too. Hmm. Well. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you understand about financial things and all. Things that just make my poor head swim. Matter of training, that's all. Well, it's more than that. It takes genius. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, if you want to call it that. Oh, I just admire anyone so when they can add and subtract and everything. <laughs> I bet Hargraves can't do it. I bet Waller Pigeon can't either. Mm, that's why I asked you over this evening, Frock Martin. What? Why? Well, I, I thought we'd be here together and we could just... Well, you see, I got my income tax this morning and... <laughs> 
I declare, I can't make head or tail of it. So that's it, Lily. Oh, but I'd stay by your side every minute, Throckmorton, and bring you little things to eat. <laughs> please, pretty please. Oh, by George, I wish I'd stuck to Stinky in the doghouse. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. During the coming drive for victory, we're all going to need extra energy to get the job done. And that's why it's so important to see that the family diet includes a plentiful supply of well-balanced, nourishing foods. Foods that really taste good, like parquet, the famous spread for bread made by Kraft. Parquet has a delicate, appetizing flavor that really satisfies It steps up your family nutrition program because it makes the family want to eat more bread and other foods that contribute to glowing health and strength. And as for energy, parquet margarine is one of the very best energy foods you can serve. And remember, every pound contains at least 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So for flavor, for good nutrition, and for economy, be sure to ask your dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine... Made by Kraft. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Two hours have passed, but he's right where we left him. Trapped by the Widow Ransom's silken snare and floundering around in her income tax. Well, let's see here. Business or profession. Fill in Schedule C, two. Farmers keeping no books or account. Well, she's not a farmer. That much I know. And she's not in the armed forces. Try Fountain, supper. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, don't get up, darling. I'm bringing it to you on a tray. Oh, what do you got? Well, it's just a sandwich and a glass of milk. Is that what Walter Pigeon gets? Oh, silly. I thought as long as we'd had tea, you wouldn't be wanting much, and this way you won't have to interrupt your work. Oh, that's great. <laughs> How are you coming? Oh, I can see you're doing just fine. I haven't even started yet, Leela. If you want me to help you with this thing, you'll have to give me the necessary information. Oh, I'll be glad to, Throckmorton, if it's not too personal. <laughs> <laughs> to begin with, Leela... Have you had any net gain or loss from sale or exchange of property other than capital assets? Gracious, how should I know? I'd have to ask Judge Hooker. Well, why don't you? Why don't you get him to make out your whole income tax? He's your lawyer. I know, but I've asked the judge to help me with so many things lately. I just couldn't ask him to do any more without charging me. Yes, uh, well, he'd be glad to do it. You really think so? He'd be delighted. <laughs> yeah, let's call him up and get him right over here. Huh? Oh, I couldn't ask him, Throckmorton. Then I will. Where's the telephone? Um, right over there, under that door. You just lift up. Oh, cute. Uh, yeah, it's right in the judge's line, Leela. He'll be. Hello, Judge. How'd you guess? Say, listen, you old son of a gun. Where have you been keeping yourself lately? I haven't seen you in a week. Is that any way to treat your friends? Oh, me too. Say, Judge, guess where I'm phoning you from? I'm at Leela's. Yes. Having more darn fun. Well, we got to thinking about you, Judge. And Leela said, gee, I wish Horace were here. And I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call him right up and see if he can't come over. How about it, Judge? Great. Hurry now. And, oh, Judge, be sure and bring your glasses. (laughs) (laughs) You see, just leave it to your Uncle Throckmorton. He'll be right over. That can't be him. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Peavy, come in. Peavy. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Ransom. Well, well. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Won't you take off your coat? Oh, no, I won't stay, Mrs. Ransom. I, I was on my way home to supper, and I just dropped by to leave there. Kleenex? Throckmorton, it's a box of Kleenex. <laughs> Kleenex? Oh, you don't know how hard it is to get. Oh, Mr. Peavy, you're a lamb. I declare I could just kiss you. Well, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, I had it put away for you under the counter, and then I went away for a few days. Uh, I heard you had the flu, Peavy. How are you feeling? Oh, just trying, Mr. Gellersleeve. Fit as a fiddle. Oh? <laughs> Fit as a fiddle and ready for love, huh? 
Well, now, I, I, I uh, hope I'm not interrupting anything here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Peavy, stick around. We weren't doing anything. <laughs> Just my income tie. Uh, no rush about that. You say you're out of town for a few days? Uh, yes, Mrs. Peavy and I had to go down to Belleville. Oh, great. Have a good time. Well, uh, we were there on a rather sad errand. Oh. My uh, mother-in-law, Mrs. Peavy's mother. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I guess we all have to go sometime. Well, perhaps it was all for the best. Well, I raised that point, but Mrs. Peavy... <laughs> She couldn't seem to see it my way. Of course, she was upset. Oh, of course. But it was a nice service. Dr. Kaltenmeyer spoke a few words, and we saw a lot of people we hadn't seen in a long time. Everything was very nice. Mm. That's always such a comfort, I think. Yes. You know, the old lady lived with us for a good many years before she went to Belleville to live with her son. I guess it won't seem like home without her. Well, no, I... I guess I'd better be getting along home. Uh, don't rush off, Phoebe. Oh, no, don't. We're not doing anything. Just trying to finish my income tax. Yes, income tax. Have you looked at the thing yet, Peavy? Mr. Gildersleeve, I looked at it this morning. And there's one thing I wish someone would tell me. Oh, what's that? Are they kidding? <laughs> Thank heaven. Must be Hooker. I'll go. Well, hello, Judge. Come on in. Thank you, Gildy. By golly, I'm glad you called me up. I'm just in the mood for a little diversion. Oh, well, you came to the right place, Judge. Here, let me have your coat. Thank you. Yes, sir. Plenty of diversion. <laughs> Charming hostess. Indeed she is. Where is Leela? In the other room. Plenty of diversion, Judge, and a chance to do a New Year's good deed, too. Hmm? Good deed? Uh-huh. Say, Horace... Let's help Leela with her income tax. Gildersleeve, you're a dirty dog. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Horace, the poor little girl is desperate. Are you going to let her think you're unwilling to help? No, I'm not unwilling. I just don't like to be invited to people's houses under false pretenses. Oh, Horace, now come on, be a sport. We'll have it done in no time. Well, I guess you haven't seen the new tax form. Well, Leela, here's Horace. Many hands make light work, you know. Oh, Horace, you're an angel to help me. Glad to do it for you, Leela. Glad to do it. <laughs> Got your checkbooks here, deposit slips? Rock Martin, I knew he'd think of something practical right away. Here they are, Judge. Fine. Now, these represent all the money you received during the year, do they not? Well, practically. All my big checks are deposited. Only once in a while I get a little bitty dividend and I just cash that. <laughs> this is going to be worse than I thought. <laughs> now, let me see that list of your securities. Now, write down all the dividends, whether you got them or not. Uh, here's the list. Remember, you made it out for me yourself. Yeah, I remember. Now, let's see. One share of Happy Valley Light and Power, five dollars. One share of Fisdale Improvement Company, five dollars. let's go in the other room and let the judge concentrate. He might want to ask some questions. No, he's got all the stuff right there. Come on. Strock, I don't feel right sneaking off like this while the judge is working. We weren't helping him any. When there's something I can do to help, I'll do it. Come on. Let's sit by the fire. No, I don't think we'd better somehow. Oh? Oh, I've got a great idea. Let's dance. Oh, no. The radio would disturb the judge. We won't use the radio. I'll just sing softly in your little ear. <laughs> well, just for a minute. All right. Why do I love you? Why do you love me? <laughs> Nicely, Throckmorton. Now, now, let's just dine, shall we? Uh, let's go downtown someplace and dance, Leela. Just for a little while. The judge will never notice we've gone. Why, Throckmorton, what a disloyal idea. You got Horace over here to help you. Yeah, and he's being a big help. <laughs> Listen, Leela. No, Throckmorton, stop. Hey, okay, Gildersleeve, what's going on? Oh, we were just dancing, Judge. Dancing? I don't see any orchestra. Oh, Throckmorton was singing for the music. Yeah. Well, that sounds more like what I came over for. Gildersleeve, suppose you go check my edition while I tread a few measures. Judge, I'll take your edition on trust. Well. Uh, I'd feel much better if you check it, Throckmorton. Uh, this is no fair, you old goat. <laughs> Leela, may I have the pleasure of this dance? I'd be delighted, Judge. All right. 
Play, orchestra, play. Put on your old gray bonnet with a blue ribbon on it while I put old diamond to the shade. Or we're off to Dover through the fields of clover on our golden wedding day. Oh, my goodness, Horace, you certainly dance vigorously. <laughs> Thank you, Leela. You're a very good dancer yourself. Oh, thank you. You're looking very handsome, too. Now, George. Say, why don't you and I go down to Peavy's and get a soda? Throckmorton will never notice. Why, Horace, look, I thought you came over here to help me. Well, I did, but Gildy's doing so well, I thought... Oh, come on. Just take us a few minutes. Judge, you ought to be ashamed. Is this man annoying you, madam? (laughs) (laughs) Well, are you all through with the additions, Rockmore? Yeah, and the judge made a mistake, too. I don't believe it. Where was it? That's for you to find out. It's there. (laughs) Come on, Leela. It's my dance. Oh, now, you boys are being ridiculous, both of you. Let's go and finish up my poor little income tax, and then we can all have fun. But, Leela, it's my turn. Now, you have the first turn. Now, you're all even. Come on, Throckmorton, let's finish up. Oh, well, come on, Judge. All right. Now, let's see. Leela, did you make any contributions during the year 1943? Well, I put 50 cents in the plate every Sunday. Oh, mercy, who can that be? Excuse me, Horace, Throckmorton. All right, Judge, contributions is easy. What about net capital gains? Let me see you explain that if you're so smart. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Ransom. What, Dr. Hargrave, what a surprise. Well, I warned you I'd need your help on a case sometime. Would you like to be an angel of mercy for a little while? Oh, I surely would, Doc. Don't I've got a call about 20 miles out in the country. Some farmer's broken his leg, but it's a nice moonlight night, and my tank is full of gas. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> How exciting. Uh, the broken leg, I mean. Well, are you game? Well, I'll tell you, I've got two income tax men here working on my return, and I don't... Oh, we'll be back in two hours, I promise. Oh, uh, what is it, Leela? Oh, Throckmorton, I didn't... Oh, hello uh... there, Gildersleeve uh... and Judge Hooker. Good evening. Hello, Hargrave. What do you want, your two dollars? Yeah. <laughs> no, I... I've got an emergency case I've got to see, Gildersleeve, and Mrs. Ransom has very kindly consented to go along as my, uh, anesthetist. Oh, Dr. Hargrave. <laughs> now, look here, Leela. Leela, this isn't fair. It's only 20 miles. 20 miles? Oh, where's my coat? Is this it? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Now, you boys keep working. You hear? I'll be back in an hour. But, Leela. Leela. Goodbye. 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 I'll be doggone. What's he got that we haven't got? A C card. That's women for you. <laughs> Leroy, it's half past eight. Bedtime, my boy. Why, so it is, Unc. I've been working so hard I didn't notice. Well, doing your homework? Oh, no, I finished that Saturday. Huh? I've been cleaning up the cellar. Well, well. Good night, Uncle Mort. Phew. I wonder what's come over him. (laughs) Good night, everybody. (laughs) Music heard on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.